Next up in our home lab series, we're going to install Home Assistant. You want a smart home and you got a hodgepodge of different devices, doorbells, thermostats, all that stuff. Well, I'm going to show you how I'm going to put it all in one virtual machine right here on the home lab. Y'all stay with me. Hey everybody, Scott Burnett here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Hope everybody's doing well today. Let's get to it. Okay, our home lab series, I'm going to put a link to the playlist up here above me. We've got um, five videos now of setting up the home lab server, tweaking it, building VMs, doing specialized VMs for things that I'm doing around the house here or in the studio. Today, we're going to do Home Assistant, and I'll put a link to the Home, Assist home Assistant website and what it is it is a piece of software that allows you to bring your smart home automation devices in to one place and have one dashboard or one application on your phone or tablet or computer or whatever that you can see uh, control and do things with your smart home so right now you have your Apple Home Kit, you have your Google Home, and you have all your Zigbee and Z-Wave. Um, you just have a just a tremendous amount of devices, and if you're if you don't do it right, like I I did not do it right. I just would see something and buy it and set it up, and then come back to my Apple iPhone and go well, it doesn't work with it. So what we're going to do, we're going to switch screens over here and go right to building a virtual machine. So the other day when I, I went to this website, it's on GitHub. It's a Proxmox helper scripts. We use this to tweak and build our VM. Okay, there's one line here that's Home Assistant. Now there's several different things. You can put it in a container like a Docker container or, or whatever. Uh, you can just create a Raspberry Pi image and put it on Raspberry Pi, which I'm doing that with another piece of software right now, but it doesn't have all the features that I need. So what we're going to do, we're going to click on the Home Assistant OSVM. Now, I've done this a couple times. It works pretty good. So we're going to go right here. And this script automates the manual process of finding, downloading, and extracting the official KVM disk image provided by the Home Assistant team. And it creates a VM with user-defined settings, importing, attaching the dish, disk, and the whole bit. So what we're going to do, this, this little script right here, we're going to grab this. And this will create a virtual machine, 4 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, and two virtual CPUs. And when it gets done, we're going to go down here to this Home Assistant. We're going to do the IP address of the server, and 8123 is the port. So I'm going to go back to my home lab here. This is my home lab. And I'm on my PVE node, and I'm going to go to the shell. This is our command line interface where we can do things and I'm going to paste all right this is a bash script what we're going to do we hit enter and it's going to start and it'll ask you do you want to this will create a new home assistant VM proceed I'm going to hit yes use the default settings now you can go to advanced and change all kinds of stuff I'm just going to hit yes <clears throat> it's going to ask me where to put the storage I'm going to put it right there and all I'm doing is using my arrow keys in the space bar. And I'm going to tab OK. And now it's going to build it. So let's, I'll, I'll speed you through this process. All right, that took what, uh, three minutes? Took three minutes. So what I'm going to do now. We should be able to go to the IP address. Okay, I just got a thing on my watch here. The home assistant has just joined the network, so. 
Let's see if we can find it on the network here and see what IP address it got. We're going to go to the console. Okay, it told me it got 249, but I'm going I'm to see if we can't do the home assistant dot local 8123. So I'm going to go here and go HTTP colon slash slash home assistant that right? dot local colon eight one two three all right that got it that's it got the url now it'll tell you it's going to take up to 20 minutes but that's generally on a raspberry pi on a wireless network so now we're greeted with a setup screen so i'm going to create a, a user account for this all right so once you get your account created and, and make sure you have a strong password you can uh, name it you can come down here and find your location I just go down to my time zone and go Eastern and uh, that's good enough right there I, I can go back and find my elevation but uh, I'm in the US my currency is that uh, I don't turn on any of the analytics on this and here it found the devices in my smart home it, that are discoverable um, so it found my, my home bridge my hoobs thing on Raspberry Pi my Nest thermostat my Roku which apparently is still turned on I must have forgot to turn it off my printer and it found my NAS a couple of things but I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish now here we are at the user interface of home assistant and you can go in and, and make all kind of changes you can pretty it up you can do all kind of stuff but um, I just want to show you one thing here how you can go in and add devices so you can control your home from a cloud you can uh, use all kind of devices to do that you can add your uh, devices what they call integrations uh, it found all kind of stuff on mine and I can add more you can uh, have smart switches where you walk in motion detectors to turn stuff on and everything you can do it all through home assistant so if I were to look here and Go to devices and then search devices and oh I need to add I'm sorry I need to go there to add device and then search for a brand so all these brands are devices smart home devices and there's just a blue million of them I'm gonna type blink and I'm gonna sign in my username password. Okay, now it found the following devices. And you can go in and tell it where your your blink or ring, nest, whatever you want to do are. And you can add all kind of things, battery voltages, uh, motion detection, do all kind of stuff. You can do it with the Eufy, the Wise, um, all the different cameras you can do the, the ring nest you can do all these things with it and one of the neat things you can do in the settings here where you have all the devices and automations and scenes and stuff you can go down to dashboards when you click dashboards you have they give you one or two here right out the gate one of them is overview and I added the blink cameras and what you do is go over here to open and here is the default uh, dashboard and I can go and resize all these controls and I can add more um, 
little integrations to it, like battery voltages and temperatures and whatnot. But I can also add uh, my ring doorbell, my Nest thermostat. I can do everything. And what's cool, you can go and open up a web browser on your smart TV and have this dashboard on there so you can walk by, look at it, and, you know, you get a text message on your watch. Hey, so-and-so at the front door. You can look up here and go, hey, I don't want to go to the front door. So this is one of the coolest things about it. You can customize it to the nth degree. So I like it. And uh, it's just going to be a neat piece of software. And I'm going to walk you. I'm going to do some more videos of adding my smart home devices. And then what you can do, you can go to your phone or your tablet, get the Home Assistant app, and tie it all in there together. And you can get all your notifications and whatever else. And you've got it on your home server. You're not having to pay for cloud which is one thing I like, you know, everything I've showed you in the home lab so far, except for the computer, which was very inexpensive, has been free. I mean, everything. So it's been a very cool deal that I don't have to spend money and do something I enjoy and, and have some cool automation around the house and everything. So, but anyway, if you got any questions about this, let me know. Uh, if you do home assistant different than this, let me know. I just think it's cool to do all the nerdy stuff and everything. I've been I've been a nerd for a really really long time, so, but um, I just think it's neat that your doorbell or your camera or your light switch and some can let you know, hey, I'm doing this. So, I'm big into data in my normal job anyway. So it's it's pretty neat. So. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell. Be notified. Um, hope everybody's doing great today. If you got any questions, let me know. But that'll be it. I guess like I always say, until the next video, thanks for watching.